In this video, I will show you how to determine the end behavior of functions like these. As um, x approaches positive and negative infinity, without looking at the graph or anything like that, we're just going to use our brains and do this logically. Looking at problem number one, first let's decide what will happen to the function as x approaches infinity. So imagine what will happen as the x values become bigger and bigger and bigger. The exponents become very important here. Look at this term, 3x squared. Because this is squared, this is going to approach infinity much faster than any of the other terms. First of all, the constant terms are not changing. Um, so they will become irrelevant very quickly as x gets bigger and bigger. Um, but when you're squaring something, it's going to increase much faster than something that is linear. Um, so very quickly, this x term is going to become irrelevant as well. So with the numerator approaching 3x squared and the denominator approaching x, the function is approaching 3x squared over x. Now, x is approaching infinity. So that means x is definitely not 0. So we don't have to worry about dividing by 0. So um, x squared divided by x, those uh, x's will cancel each other out. So this is going to approach 3x. So what happens as x approaches infinity? What happens to this? Well, if x is getting bigger and bigger, <clears throat> this is 3 times a very big number. So f of x is approaching infinity. OK, now let's roll back the clock and ask ourselves what happens as x approaches negative infinity. OK, so now x is approaching negative infinity. <clears throat> so the, these terms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. OK, um, now for starters, the constants are not changing. So they will very quickly become irrelevant. Focus on the numerator. The first term, 3x squared, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, even though x is now a negative number, the, um, you're squaring it, and that turns it positive. So this, is, this term is just getting bigger and bigger in the positive direction. Um, <clears throat> this term is also going to be positive, because we have a negative times a negative. That's going to be a positive. But it actually doesn't matter, because this term is squared. This term is linear. So again, a term that is increasing exponentially is going to increase much faster than a term that is increasing in a linear way. So very quickly, this term is going to become irrelevant. OK, so if I could just erase this stuff. So the function as a whole is going to approach 3x squared over x. Now. Remember, we're talking about what happens as x approaches negative infinity. So x is not 0. So we don't have to worry about dividing by 0. So we can go ahead and um, divide 3x squared by x. And uh, that will show that the function is approaching 3x. Now, as x approaches negative infinity, x is getting to be more and more and more negative. In other words, x is a, is a big negative number. Um, when I say big, I mean absolute value. It's a very negative number, like negative a million. Uh, multiply that by 3, and you have an even more negative number. So we are definitely approaching negative infinity. Take a look at problem number two. It's all about these terms that have the x squared in them. Um, as x approaches positive infinity, these terms are going to approach positive infinity uh, much faster than the other terms. So these 
terms are going to become irrelevant very quickly. Um, so eventually, uh, so this is going to be approaching whatever 3x squared over 6x squared is. Now notice that we have x squared over x squared. We're approaching infinity, so we know these are not going to be 0. Um, so the x squared and the x squared will wind up canceling each other out. So um, that's going to leave us approaching 3 over 6, which is 1 half. So the overall value of this function is going to approach 1 half as x approaches positive infinity, as x gets bigger and bigger. All right, what about negative infinity? Well, it's going to wind up being the same thing. And that's because um, we're squaring these terms. So squaring the x value um, as it gets more and more negative, it's still going to become positive. Uh, so the overall value of each of these is still going to approach infinity much more quickly um, than any of these other terms are changing. So this is still going to be approaching positive infinity. This is still approaching positive infinity so much faster than these that they become irrelevant. And the analysis um, is the same as uh, we did a minute ago. We're, we're still going to be approaching 3x squared over 6x squared. And then these are canceling out. So it's still going to be 1 half again. OK, looking at number 3, as x approaches infinity, what happens to the function? Well, as x approaches infinity, these constants are going to quickly become irrelevant, all right, because they are not changing. So the function is going to approach x over negative x, all right? So um, as we're approaching infinity, then um, x is not going to be 0 because we're approaching infinity. So x over negative x is going to be negative 1. So f of x will approach negative 1. Now, what about as we approach negative infinity? OK, how will that change um, our analysis? Well, as x is approaching negative, whoops, not negative 8. As x is approaching negative infinity, OK, so this is approaching negative infinity. Um, again, the constants are going to be qu become quickly irrelevant. Um, so we're going to have x over negative x very soon. Um, but we're approaching negative infinity. So imagine substituting in negative values here. OK, so um, imagine that x was, let's say, negative 1,000. So I would have negative 1,000 here. But if I substitute negative 1,000 in for x right here, it's going to become positive 1,000. OK, so I'm still going to get negative 1. It's just that um, as we approach negative infinity, the numerator is going to be negative while the denominator will be positive. But it's still going to equal negative 1. Take a look at number 4. As x approaches infinity, so imagine x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and uh, getting closer and closer to positive infinity. These constants are going to very quickly become irrelevant. So this is going to be approaching 4x <clears throat> squared over x. Now, x is a positive number, all right? Because we're approaching positive infinity. So just keep that in mind. Um, so this is going to become the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x. OK, so we are approaching 2x over x. All right, it's important that we knew that this was a positive number, so we can take the square root of this without getting imaginary numbers. Okay, so we have this. 
um, the x's are going to cancel each other out. Remember, x is not zero because we're approaching infinity. So that means the value of the function overall is going to approach two. Now, how will the analysis change when the x values are approaching negative infinity? Well, the numerator won't change at all because um, even if this x value is negative, we're squaring it, so it's going to turn positive anyway. So this is still going to be a positive under the radical, so we're still going to get 2x, and this is positive. Um, the only thing that's going to change is the x value in the denominator is now going to be negative. Okay, because there's no, there's no squaring that's going to turn this positive. So now we have a positive divided by a negative. Um, so the x values will still cancel out, but the end result is going to be that we're going to have a negative 2. Looking at number 5, we really will be focusing on this first term. Because it has the highest exponent, um, the, the size of this term in absolute value is going to increase so much faster than the others that the other terms will quickly become irrelevant. So whatever happens to this term, um, that's what the function is really approaching. So um, g of x will be approaching negative 3x to the 10th power. So um, as x approaches positive infinity, um, then this is going to be a really, really, really big number times uh, negative 3. So this is going to be a very large negative number. So that's negative infinity. Now, will anything change as we approach negative infinity? Well, the answer is no, because we have an even power. So. Um, if x is very large, uh, you, when I say large, I mean large in absolute value. If you have a very, very negative number to the 10th power, it's going to become a positive number again. And then multiply that by negative 3, you're going to end up with a very, very negative number. So that's also going to be negative infinity. Take a look at number 6. Um, even though 98 and 90, 97, um, these are, are very close to 99, that doesn't matter. Um, because 99 is the biggest exponent, uh, eventually the other terms will all become irrelevant because uh, this one is going to increase in absolute value faster than the others. So the function will approach 3x to the 99th power. Um, so as x approaches positive infinity, the value of the function will simply approach positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, well, 99 is an odd exponent. So if you um, raise a negative number to an odd power, it still stays negative. So this is going to become more and more and more negative, a very large, meaning absolute value, a large negative number. Um, so that's negative infinity. Looking at number seven. Um, well, these are approaching, uh, as x approaches positive infinity, what is going to happen to the function? Well, um, if x is a positive number, the absolute value of x and x are the same thing. So as x approaches positive infinity, then we are really just looking at x over x, um, which is going to equal 1. So f of x is approaching 1. Now as x approaches negative infinity, what's the function doing? Well, as x approaches negative infinity, um, 
the numerator is always going to be positive um, because of the absolute value. So it's still going to be, um, so this is going to be a very large positive number. Now, this is going to be a negative number. So it's, it's going to be like having x over negative x because um, you're going to have a positive number divided by a negative number. Um, x is not going to be 0, so these will cancel each other out and make 1, except for it'll make negative 1 because this will be a positive number and this will be the same number, only it'll be a negative number. So that makes negative 1. As x approaches positive infinity, because of the x to the fifth power, um, with that exponent of 5, this term is going to grow much faster than the linear term. So this negative 5x will quickly become irrelevant. So we're approaching the absolute value of x to the fifth power. So um, if x is approaching positive infinity, then this is a positive number. So that's really going to be the same thing as x to the fifth power without the absolute value. And uh, so as x approaches positive infinity, this expression is going to approach positive infinity. Okay, now what if um, x is approaching negative infinity? Well, um, still this linear term is going to be irrelevant. All right, so we're still approaching the absolute value of x to the fifth power. But now x is a negative number. Okay, so um, this is going to approach negative infinity inside of here. So this is going to approach the absolute value of negative infinity. Um, I'm just saying, uh, imagine we're getting very large negative numbers. Uh, but because of the absolute value, this is going to become a positive number. So we are going to be approaching positive infinity. Take a look at number nine. Um, let's see, as x approaches positive infinity, what's going to happen to the function? Um, well, this is a constant, so um, it doesn't matter what x is, <coughs> you're still going to have negative 12. So it doesn't matter if x is approaching positive infinity or negative infinity, the value of the function remains constant at negative 12 the entire time. All right, for the piecewise function, I'm going to color code this so you can uh, more easily follow what I'm doing. So first of all, as x approaches positive infinity, if we're dealing with numbers approaching positive infinity, should we be looking at the top piece or the bottom piece of the piecewise function? Well, we should be looking at the bottom piece of the piecewise function um, because this is what we will use for anything bigger than 5. And here we are approaching positive infinity. So, um, as we approach positive infinity, we are going to be approaching 3 because this is a constant. So as soon as we get past 5, it's going to be 3 from then on. So um, the function will approach 3. So switching colors now, if we're approaching negative infinity, we're definitely less than 5. So we should be using the top piece of the piecewise function. Okay, so we really are just focusing our eyes on the 2x minus 4. What's that approaching? Um, well, as x approaches negative infinity, um, this constant of 4 is going to quickly become irrelevant. So it's going to approach 2x. Um, when x is a very negative number, Ne you know, imagine negative 100, negative 1,000. Um, two times a negative number is going to be a negative number. So this is going to approach negative infinity. Looking at number 
11. Okay, let's see. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches. So positive infinity. Um, we're definitely going to be greater than negative 1. So we should be looking at this piece of the piecewise function. Okay, so this is going to definitely approach. Um, so we're looking at x squared. Um, as x approaches positive infinity, x squared is going to approach positive infinity. So it's going to get bigger and bigger. Okay, what about as x approaches negative infinity? All right, as x gets more and more negative. So first of all, um, as we approach negative infinity, we're definitely less than negative 1. So we're going to be dealing with this piece of the piecewise function. Okay, so what's going to happen to this guy? Well, as um, x gets more and more negative, this constant is going to become irrelevant. So we're going to be approaching negative 3x. So because um, x is going to be more and more negative, then we're going to have a negative number times a negative number. So that's going to be a positive number. Um, so uh, if x is a very large negative number times negative 3, now you have a very large positive number. So this is approaching positive infinity. All right, let's do one more. As x approaches positive infinity, we are definitely going to be bigger than negative 5. So we are talking about this piece of the function. That's just a constant, so it's definitely approaching 3. Okay, now, when x is approaching negative infinity, we are definitely less than negative 5, so that's why we will be approaching this. As x gets more and more negative, this constant is going to quickly become irrelevant. So this is going to be approaching 2 times the absolute value of x. So as x becomes a very large negative number, the absolute value will make it a very large positive number. Um, times 2 will be an even larger positive number. So that is positive infinity. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe. Or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.